Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to our webinar today on uh, the new success block marketplace. My name is Nate Richardson. I'm a product manager here at, uh, at Tatango. And joining me today is Ravit Danino. She is our SVP of product management. And again, today we'll be talking about the new success block marketplace and how to get up and running quickly and, and gain value from all that is contained. Today we'll, uh, we'll be covering a few things. First, uh, first of all is the value of success blocks. We'll, we'll talk about how to gain value and what success blocks are, the anatomy of a success block, uh, how to use the success block marketplace to find what you need, how to install, set up, and customize a success block, and then how to collaborate and share success blocks with your team. Finally, we'll wrap up with a Q&A. Uh, feel free to ask your questions at any point during the webinar. You can drop them into the chat and we'll address them at the end. Uh, now, before we get started, I am curious for everyone who's uh, joined today, um, what initiatives you are working on right now? Uh, we'd like to know so that you know, we, can, we can talk about those initiatives and the success blocks that support them today. So if you take just a couple of seconds to answer the poll that should appear on your screen. All right, and it looks like onboarding is uh, the, the most popular or what most folks are working on right now. Thank you all for taking a moment to, uh, to reply to that. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive in. I'm gonna turn it over to Ravit uh, to take us through the value of success blocks. Ravit? Good morning, everyone. Um, so as Nate mentioned, we want to talk today on marketplace and success block. And marketplace, exactly as it sounds, is the place where you will find the answers for your need. Imagine that you are coming to a store and you are looking to buy something. You know exactly what you need to buy and why. What intent will this product that you are planning to buy right now will answer you? Exactly that way the success block marketplace is working. You're coming with intent. You know that your mission in your organization is, for example, to drive onboarding, as we just saw. Or I saw many customers that spoke about adoption. You know that you have to drive adoption. You're going to the marketplace. You can just type your intent in the search bar and then see which success block will answer that immediate uh, need for you. Now, what is this success block? So I found what I need in the marketplace. I found a success block that is called onboarding. But what does it mean? What does success block has? So success block is a toolkit, your engagement toolkit. It includes all the data that you need in order to drive a specific part of your journey. If you came with an intent to drive an onboarding, what are the different things that you should do in order to be able to report on the status of your onboarding, to drive the different activities with your customer success managers to fulfill a successful onboarding? And eventually, how do you communicate with your customers as part of onboarding? What are the different messages and the different engagements that you need to run with them? All of that will come out of the box in a ready success block for your needs. Now, obviously, you can take this success block and tune it a little bit, and Nate will speak about it as part of the demo. But we are providing you the best practices, the best in class practices that you can take and drive an onboarding in your organization. Now, when Nate uh, looked on the um, read the agenda, it seems like there's a lot of activities to be doing uh, when you are coming to the marketplace. You will see in a minute uh, in the demo that from the minute you find your success block, till the minute you have it ready to work into Tango, it's a matter of seconds. It's a very, very clean and simple activity that each one of, the, each one of you can do in order to drive the value from your intent, in order to drive onboarding or adoption or any other success block. We are releasing success block almost on a weekly basis as part of the uh, bi-weekly communication that we have with each one of you we are sending information on the new success block in the marketplace. So what is the success block? Let's see what are the different pieces that a success block includes. So the first thing is, what are my goals? What are my KPIs? We talked about an intent. I know exactly 
what I'm trying to do. But what are my goals with that? For example, if my intent is onboarding, what am I trying to achieve with onboarding? And what are the different KPIs? How will I measure that I actually got to the goal? The scorecard will enable you to define the different goals and KPIs in order to make sure that you are getting to where you need and also be able to report on that. Segments are what are the different segments, what are the different customers that you're looking at as part of onboarding. And then Nate, we can move forward. Uh, different assets, different best practices that you will have as part of onboarding. Then you can see the different reports that uh, in order to report on what onboarding uh, status you are at. And lastly, and the most important pieces of this toolkit, the engagement. How do I engage with my customer success and how do I engage with uh, my users? Let's drill down a little bit to each one of those areas to understand exactly what those includes. So starting with the scorecard where you define, as you can see, my goals and KPIs. I see in onboarding that um, I wanna see for, in this example, deliver on customer uh, experience as part of onboarding and also what are the onboarding uh, implementation highlights. I see all of that in a very nice KPIs that provide me visibility to the status. I can obviously share it with my team and go forward and understand what's the data behind each one of those scorecards and KPIs. Now again, when you're bringing a success look from the marketplace, it's all ready for you. We are providing you the goals and the KPIs in order to meet those, um, in order to meet those uh, metrics. Moving on to the second area, segments. Segments will enable you to define the different groups for which you want to answer questions within different KPIs. You can ask any question. Show me how many customers are right now in onboarding. What is their status? What are the activities that they are doing? And you will be able to get the answers for those. And you will be able more than that to use those segments in order to drive the specific engagement with your customers. And again, that comes out of the box with uh, the success look you will be bringing from the marketplace. Moving on, we have the ability to provide you the specific success place. And this is the core of the success block. Here you will define what are the workflows that you would like to drive with your customers in order to achieve a specific activity. So for example, in onboarding, I wanna make sure that a customer success manager will engage with the customer and define a kickoff meeting, sorry, schedule a kickoff meeting or we'll go ahead and start work with the customer on integration if, the, if these are high touch uh, customers or in the case of low touch, maybe I need to drive specific activities in order to drive those uh, implementations with many customers that I'm uh, working with. All of that workflow is defined in the success plate and will trigger activities for you and for your CSMs based on the status of your customers. The next piece is how do I engage with my customers? So campaigns is a very critical piece of the puzzle. I wanna make sure that I'm engaging not only with my CSMs as we just saw as part of the workflow to drive activities. I also wanna be in touch with my users, with my end customers. And for that, I'll have uh, the ability to use campaigns and connect with the customers. As you can see, it's not only connect with them based on events, it's also the ability to see the um, campaigns overview metrics, what's the value that each one of these campaigns uh, provided me. So all of it, again, will be coming ready as part of the success block. And lastly, the last two pieces here are the ability to report on the progress that I have within uh, the success block. And lastly, assets where I can store the different best practices that my company is driving as part of the onboarding. So now, I can bring from the marketplace a, a build-in engagement process that can drive, in this example, onboarding for all each stages that not only provide me the ability to report on the status and to get an instant view of what's going on in the scorecard, but also provide the different activities to my customer success managers and to engage with my campaigns according to the best practices that I have defined. 
So as you can see, I'm bringing a success block from the marketplace, which takes seconds, and I have all of it ready just for me to start and drive the value of onboarding or of any other engagement that appear in the marketplace. Thanks, Ravit. Okay, so up next, we're gonna dive into the marketplace itself, and we'll go through how to actually install a success block within my Tatango account. Um, before we do that, we'll have one more poll. Um, I'm interested to know which success block you all are most interested in learning about on this call. Uh, we'll actually, the highest voted one, we'll go ahead and actually download and take a quick walkthrough here uh, live on the webinar today. So if you could, again, just take a couple seconds to answer this second poll, and then we'll dive into the product demo. I'll give just another second here. Nate, it seems like there is a tight competition here between a few success blocks. Yeah, I'm seeing that as well. All right, well, it looks like um, we have a, <laughs> you are right, Ravit, very close between onboarding adoption and renewal. So um, time permitting, maybe we can go through more than one, but it looks like adoption just barely eked out by one point. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the success block marketplace itself. So here we are in, uh, in my Tatango account and the success block marketplace can be found under the hamburger icon in the top left corner. Now you do need to have access uh, depending on your role to be able to actually um, you know, access the success block marketplace. Um, so if you don't see it, make sure you ask your Tatango administrator to open that up for you. Uh, but I'll go ahead and just dive here into the success block marketplace. <clears throat> and uh, to Ravit's point earlier, we have a search here in the top left where I can search for my intent. Uh, in this case, it sounds like adoption was my, uh, my winner here. So the search is going to search more than just the title. Right? We're driving adoption with key account management, but we have a specific success block uh, just for adoption. Now, before we actually take a look at the adoption success block, you'll notice that, you know, similar to any other sort of app marketplace, if you will, uh, I can drill into each one of these, get a quick couple of snapshots about, you know, what is going to be installed in my Tatango instance once I click the button, read about the, uh, the success block itself, and uh, get a full view of everything that's included from the goals and KPIs to the segments, reports, assets, Etc. Now I already have this particular one installed in my instance. Um, so what I see here in the top right is uh, an open button. Now, if you don't currently have the adoption success block installed, what you'll see instead is a button that says get. Um, and all we need to do is click that. The success block will be installed. And uh, here we are. So again, uh, to Ravit's point earlier, that was a click, one click, two clicks to get uh, a fully functioning adoption program installed into my instance of Tatango. Taking a look at the scorecard here, we've got uh, the scorecard immediately is taking into account all of the data that already exists in my Tatango instance. Um, and it knows without me having to do any sort of setup, the number of accounts I have with low license utilization, the number of accounts with high license utilization. It knows my daily active user over monthly active user ratios, increases and decreases in utilization, uh, even the contract value of accounts that have low usage. My next goal here to ensure high usage frequency of our product we have out of the box uh, things like mobile application adoption, documents uploaded, daily active users, and so on. Further down here, we wanna make sure that as part of our adoption program, that we are increasing satisfied and referenceable customers, and we have KPIs to inform us whether or not we're actually accomplishing that goal. Now, you may be saying uh, to yourself right now, well, this looks great, but um, you know, maybe we don't have a mobile app or maybe my product doesn't have the ability to upload documents and that's okay. Um, customizing a success block is super simple. You'll notice in the top right, 
I have a button here to edit my scorecard. When I do that, uh, I can then add new KPIs um, and I can also add new goals. So, um, you know, adding a, an additional goal is as simple as typing it in here. And adding a new KPI is as simple as just clicking the Add KPI button, selecting the metric that I wish to measure. For example, I may want to, uh, I may want to look at my engagement. Um, I select how I want to aggregate this, label it, and which segment specifically I'm, I'm referencing. So I might want to look at my adoption customers. What is their overall uh, engagement trend? Um, and it looks like I'm, I don't have the data in this particular instance to support this metric. However, uh, it is a couple clicks to just add in additional metrics, KPIs that I may need beyond the best practices that come out of the box. <clears throat> now, each one of these KPIs you'll notice are fed by uh, uh, segments. So again, segments come directly out of the box. Things like all of my customers that are in the adoption phase of their life cycle, all of my paying customers, uh, all of my customers who've had increase in license utilization in the last 30 days. Now, again, these are all very simple to customize. I can just drill into any one of these. And you'll notice that the segment filter that comes out of the box is looking at my license utilization changed by 10%. Maybe I'm not particularly uh, interested in that threshold. Rather, I'm looking for something a little bit higher. So we'll go ahead and just click on that, increase it to 20% and apply this filter. The thing that's important to note here is that these success blocks, these segments, these KPIs are informed by best practices, industry best practices. They come out of the box but they're very simple to uh, customize for your specific needs once it's installed. Next within the adoption success block, we have a series of reports where I can look at uh, my overall adoption, my uh, license utilization report, um, and a number of other reports out of the box that show me you know, historical trends, again, without me having to set anything up myself. So we're looking now at you know, my customers who've decreased uh, compared to my customers who've increased their license utilization over the last 30 days. This comes out of the box with breakdowns by my CSM so that I can understand which of my CSMs are driving the most adoption and which of my CSMs maybe have some opportunity to increase adoption within their customer base. And lastly, here we have this broken down by ACV out of the box so that I can understand, is it my high, highest paying customers, my lowest paying customers, somewhere in the middle in terms of who are my you know, strongest, most adopted customers. Assets do come out of the box as well. Now these assets are gonna be linked to you know, best practices from Tatango themselves. Um, so you'll notice in a number of our um, a number of our success blocks links to you know other webinars that specifically talk about how do I drive adoption um, or to blog posts, white papers, adoption guides, things of that nature. Those will come out of the box for you so that you can take what comes from the marketplace and then apply additional best practices and make it better for your business. The success plays that come out of the box here are going to be for increasing adoption. Uh, it's going to notify my CSMs when we see trends for low adoption uh, detected and reminders to schedule an executive business review. If we take a look at the low adoption trend detected, for example, <clears throat> uh, you can see that, again, without me having to set any, anything up myself, that Tatango is going to be looking for paying customers in good average or poor health, um, and uh, <clears throat> that you know have trended look have been trending down uh, in their adoption. And when that happens, tasks will be triggered for my CSMs, uh, and they can go and take action to increase customer adoption. 
And next, we'll go ahead and take a look at um, campaigns. Our campaigns here uh, are going to be, um, you know, not uh, are going to be engaging my customers proactively when Tatango detects that adoption is um, adoption is lacking in a particular account, and attempt to re-engage my customers um, <clears throat> to get them, you know, back on track. So that's a quick overview of the adoption success block. Um, we will do one other here quickly, um, since I think we have the time before we open it up for questions, um, which will be to head uh, back into the success block marketplace. Bear with me for just one second. And we'll take a look at the renewal success block, which was the second highest um, the second highest voted for here. All right. So again, renewals is going to be right here at the top for me. And you'll notice on this one, I don't actually have it installed in my instance currently. So here's that get button I mentioned previously. I'll go ahead and click get. And it's telling me that it was successfully installed and I'm redirected automatically to the success block itself. I land on the about page, but I can jump right over to my scorecard and see all sorts of information about customer renewals that are coming up. Again, you all just saw a single click. I have a fully populated scorecard that's ready to go, letting me know I have four renewals uh, that are in poor health that need my attention. I have um, you know, trends on renewals in the next 120 days um, and the overall health of my renewals that are coming up. Segments that come out of the box are gonna show me, again, all of my upcoming renewals, renewals in average, good, poor health, and um, you know, risky, high value renewals in the next quarter. You can take a look at this particular one here and the filters will say, will show me, you know, my health rank is poor, my contract value is over 100,000, and my contract renewal date is it, you know, in the next quarter. Looks like I have two accounts here that need my attention. Reports wise, we have a couple out of the box for you know, renewal health trends, um, <clears throat> assets again linked to our, uh, in this case, just the success block setup guide today. Uh, success plays to trigger the renewal process, which is gonna come out of the box. Um, letting my CSMs, calling my CSMs to action when there is a renewal coming up. Uh, renewal campaigns that are letting my customers know proactively that their renewal is coming up, um, you know, in the next 90 and in the next 30. Again, these are all very simple to go ahead and drill into. Maybe I don't necessarily want that. In the next 30 days, I can just jump into my uh, into my campaign here, and I can edit my uh, edit my criteria very quickly. And uh, instead, say perhaps I want my renewal date to be referenced for the next 14 days instead. And just like that, I've got a campaign that's going to trigger to my active users that are um, ready for renewal in the next 14 days, reminding them that that renewal is coming up. Now, one thing that you, you'll notice that we haven't touched on yet is that when I install a success block from the marketplace, it's actually gonna come with this little lock icon next to it, which means that at the moment, only I can see this success block. And, um, uh, that's on purpose. That gives you the ability, again, to come in here, make any minor changes that you may need to make to fit this to your business. And then at that point, I'm able to share it out with my team. Now, before I do that, I may actually want some input from other folks on my team. So I can invite success block collaborators. What this will do is allow me to invite other folks on my team, maybe team managers, to jump into the success block and take a look at the scorecard, the segments, et cetera, 
And once we decide that it's ready for our team, we can simply publish to the team. And when we do that, it's now available to everyone in my Tatango account. All right. So Nate, thank you. Uh, there is a question here just before we move to the other questions. Sure. If that's um, really simple as you showed it, meaning I'm just going to the marketplace, I'm clicking get, and I'm getting it right away with all the nice metrics and engagements, workflows into Tango. Is, you said the question is, is it really that easy? Yes. Well, I mean, we saw it, we saw it live, right? Yes, it really is that easy. Uh, there's, you know, to get going with any success block, it's just a single click. These don't cost anything. The only requirement is that you have access to the marketplace based on your permissions as a Tatango user. So again, you'll know whether or not that's the case by uh, whether or not in the hamburger menu, you see the success block marketplace. If you don't see that, reach out to your Tatango administrator and uh, they will uh, they should be able to enable that for you. And then okay. all the metrics will be calculated automatically for you and you have the ability as a user or sorry, as an admin or a collaborator of the success block as Nate just showed to go ahead and do small tuning if your organization needed. But the framework, the engagement flow, the different life cycle stages, all of that comes automatically with a success block. And if there are specific attributes that you do not have in your instance, once you bring the success block from the marketplace, it will bring in uh, these attributes as well, the definition of them. You have all the data that you can go ahead and read in the about uh, page that Nate showed before. Yep, and it looks like there's one other question in here, which was, what if I don't have any data in my account yet? Um, which is a great question. So one other thing that we've taken into account here is that you may be a brand, you may be brand new with Tatango and not have any data in here yet. So how do I get data in quickly? That's actually really simple in the top right corner here under these three dots. You'll notice that I can download C a CSV file with my success block attributes. Now what this will do is it will actually give me an upload template for users and for accounts. Uh, we'll go ahead and launch this here. Bear with me, I have Apple numbers, not Excel. But what you'll see, <clears throat> if I can switch my screen share successfully, is that straight away I have um, a CSV file that tells me all of the data that I need to, um, <clears throat> that I need to, to upload. So if you don't have data already, uh, we've, we've thought of that as well. Um, and uh, all you need to do is click a single button to get the upload templates and files that you need uh, to get started. Nate, just before you wrapping up, there is one more question here that just came in, uh, which is when I'm bringing the success block from the marketplace, will it start to trigger activities, send emails to customers, all of that? So the answer is no when you will bring the success block till you will take a decision as the person that either the admin or to tango or the success block owner or the success block collaborator until you will take a decision that you would like to activate and start trigger the activities nothing will happen no one will be affected so go ahead bring the uh, success block from the marketplace and start see how much value it can provide in seconds it has, it cannot cause any harm to your instance. That's right. Thanks for V. So with that, I want to thank you all very much for taking the time out of your day to join us. And uh, we hope to see you on a future webinar.